to um, this, our first meeting around the independent tree inquiry. Uh, my name is Kate Joseph, so I'm the Chief Executive at Sheffield City Council. Um, before we get started, I just want to introduce um, our other panellists. Um, so um, first off, if I can um, ask Douglas to introduce himself. Hello, yes, I'm Councillor Douglas Johnson, uh, Green Party Councillor for City Ward and now Executive Member for Climate Change, Environment and Transport. And if I could ask uh, Councillor Julie Grocott to introduce herself. Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Julie Grocott. I'm the Ward Councillor for Stocksbridge and Upadon and Deputy Leader of the Council. And Ryan? Hi, morning everyone. My name is Ryan Keyworth. I'm the Council's Director of Finance and Commercial Services and I'm helping to set this inquiry up. And finally, um, the, the person who's helping make sure all this happens smoothly, Dan. Dan Spice from Strategy and Partnerships Manager for the Council, uh, just providing some support. Thank you. So first of all, I'll just say, as, as, um, as is obvious and customary now in these times, we are um, all together on Zoom. There are going to be two meetings, of the, um, uh, two meetings, one in person and one on, on Zoom. Uh, this is that one today. Um, the, mo the way we're going to run the session is that there'll be um, a, a, a relatively short, um, succinct um, set of um, uh, introductions at the beginning. Um, in webinar mode. So uh, all of you are here will be able to um, hear um, the, the, the um, uh, contributions from the speakers and then we'll admit all of the participants into the room to enable an open question and answer set, set an open, sorry, it's early in the morning, question and answer session. Um, so um, what I just wanted to flag is a few ground rules for the meeting today. Um, firstly, um, uh, I want to ask uh, to make the point that there are, I think, well over 30 participants here today um, representing lots and lots of different views. So it's really important um, that we all uh, allow for the space for different questions and perspectives to be raised, for those to be heard listen to, but also to make sure that we are um, all trying as hard as possible to be succinct to make sure that everybody gets a chance to um, ask their question and have their question answered. So that um, commitment to respectfulness, to kindness and to listening, I think is really important um, at the outset. Um, I'd really ask, and um, we've got a lot of people, as I said, on Zoom, so it's really important that um, if you want to come in, please use the raise hands function. Um, that uh, should be, if you wiggle your cursor around towards the bottom, appear in a bottom bar in the um, on the Zoom screen, depending on your setup. Uh, that way, myself and Dan will be able to see that you've got your hand up and we'll come to you. Um, uh, please um, uh, don't um, come off mute and, and, and just jump into the meeting as that could be quite disruptive, I, um, I'm sure you understand. Um, we'll get those contributions from our panel first, so Councillor Johnson, Councillor Broker and, uh, and Ryan Keyworth. Uh, we'll bring everyone into the room then for that full discussion. Um, the Zoom Q&A function is turned on, so you could submit questions also in that way if you would like. Um, and if you would like to submit questions anonymously, that is also fine. Um, some, some participants may want to speak, others may want to just submit their questions in writing, and that's absolutely fine. And then finally, the session is being webcast on public eye, and that means that it will be viewable on demand afterwards if attendees wish to share it. And we'll send that link around afterwards as well so you can share. The in-person meeting uh, will be in the town hall next week, next Thursday evening. I think that's all I need to say, other than to thank you again for your time this morning. Um, uh, we are embarking upon, this is the first stage in, in terms of a public discussion as we embark upon our um, the commitment of the cooperative administration to, um, to an independent public inquiry into the trees. And I just want to um, reassert our commitment to doing this in an open, and um, uh, inclusive way um, with, with citizens of the city. And that's what this meeting's about. So um, hopefully that will um, come through as we go through the morning. Um, without further ado then, uh, I'd like to hand over to Councillor Julie Grocott, the Deputy Leader of the Council, who uh, will make um, an opening statement um, and, uh, and then pass on to Councillor Johnson. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I think, as Kate says, thank you all for getting up so early to join us this morning. Um, it's very impressive that we've got so many people here. Um, I think it might be helpful for me to just give you a quick whirlwind tour of how I've got to be where I am, because many of you will not know me. Um, I retired 
um, from the police service in 2013. And at that point, I um, took up doing lots of voluntary work in my local community. That was um, where my interests lie. That was what I wanted to do. Um, having been a public sector worker for all of my adult life, um, it was nice to just continue giving something back to the community. I had no um, interest or desire, shall we say, to become a local councillor, but suddenly, two years ago, um, here I am and thoroughly enjoying it. I think it's important that you all know that from the outset to understand that um, probably one of the reasons I was asked to be involved in the tree inquiry was that I wasn't on the council, I didn't have any um, vested interest um, in what was happening when the issues around the street trees um, started and continued. So in that respect, my background, knowledge and understanding as far as the um, the street trees goes is down to what I've seen and heard on local news media and has been nothing more than that which I think um, is helpful in so much as um, I can come here to this inquiry with a clean sheet of paper to make sure that I listen to what everyone has to say, um, digest that and engage with all of you um, as very best I can. For me the inquiry um, is overdue. I think it's important that we do do this and I think it's important that we get it right. So for me that's about um, everyone who wants to be involved having the opportunity to be involved, feeling that it's a safe environment to do that in, um, having their say, having everyone respect what they say and importantly listen to what is said. Um, I understand and appreciate that as the inquiry goes along, it will be at times difficult and uncomfortable. I think we all have to um, acknowledge and appreciate that, but I think it's important that we um, all feel that this is a safe place to, to say and listen and, and, and be involved as best that we can. Um, this inquiry isn't going to be over in the blink of an eye. We don't know how long it will take, but it could take some time. So I think it's important that we are all patient, that um, we don't go running off making decisions before the conclusion of the inquiry. I think it's important that we wait until the end, that we let whoever becomes the independent chair do the job that they need to do. And then as a council, we focus on ensuring that any recommendations that come out of that um, are implemented. Uh, I've lived in Sheffield all my life. I am Sheffield through and through. And one of the things that I think is really important to come um, out of this inquiry at the end of the day is that as a city we can heal, we can come together, we can reach a conclusion that um, satisfies everyone, means that we've all been listened to, we've all valued um, everyone's contributions and at the end of the day we can come together and, and reconcile um, what has happened. Um, I'm really heartened that the council are doing this work now. Um, I thank officers for the hard work they've put into getting us to this stage. Um, this is just the very start of a quite long journey, um, but I look forward to listening to what everyone has to say over the coming months, and hopefully we'll get to um, a sensible um, conclusion um, at the end of it. And thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you, Councillor Grocott. Um, Councillor Johnson, would you like to go next? Well, thank you, yes. Um, so the street tree inquiry came about when I was um, with Julie here and Terry Fox and Alison Teal, um, who's the deputy leader of the Green Group of Councillors, came together to say there needs to be a, a tree inquiry. And it was agreed um, as part of the negotiations about forming the whole executive of the council after the elections this year. It's because it's it's actually a really important issue across um, all the parties. Um, and because it's obviously been such a major campaign and such a major issue for all of us in Sheffield for so many years now. And I was just thinking uh, when uh, Julie was saying that in 2013, you were leaving the police and you were completely outside politics. Um, it was only a year after the contract had been signed um, for the, uh, the street um, issues with Amy. Um, and at that time, already people were aggrieved at um, the 
um, the, the number of trees being cut down without consultation on streets. And in 2013, I attended um, a public meeting there that had been called um, at St Mary's Church. And, you know, grown people were, were literally in tears at, you know, the impact on their streets and the impact on their children of how they felt they're being treated. At that time, we thought it was something that was surely going to be um, resolvable and um, you know, may not work all that well, but um, there's got to be a working relationship. And as we all know, it really didn't go like that. It became such a major issue. And of course, it led on to um, a huge campaign um, leading for whole scale change to governance of the, the, the way that the council is run. The biggest petition in local government history of this sort of um, thing. And that's also, of course, um, been voted on by the people in May of this year and in the lead up to the formation of this executive. So it's obviously a really important issue and notwithstanding the fact that actually things are very different on the ground now. Um, there is, you know, there are relatively cordial working relationships. There is dialogue going on around people interested in trees. There are some much more imaginative ways to address the issues of trees on the streets now. But all the same, the, there is, it, it has caused a lot of scars over the last few years, and that's why we all agree this inquiry is needed. So from my point of view, it's really important that it's independent and that we get on with it. Most importantly, it's independent. So I'm very much looking forward to um, having the appointment of an independent chair and for that chair to really lead on how the inquiry is going to run. Um, there's, there'll be questions about the terms of reference and the difficulty that we have is that if we try and fix the terms of reference um, too far in advance, no doubt the council or the campaigners or someone will be accused of fixing it. So it is really important that the terms of reference have the full confidence and full input of the person who's going to be in charge of running this inquiry and that people have confidence in that. And it's also important that the chair is independent, I think, because it's important the, 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 for the integrity of the outcome of this inquiry. It's important that it's not seen as something that's just there to sort of whitewash what the council did, as some people see it, but equally I mean, important so it's not just seen as a, a bias sop towards you know, vigorous tree campaigners. It has to be seen as even-handed across the board, otherwise it's not worth doing. So um, I think the next thing is that uh, we will hear about what the process is, but I'll hand back to Kate. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. Um, and I'll, I will hand over now to um, Ryan, who can answer that question and go into a bit more detail on the process. And I, um, I just, just want to apologise for um, using incorrect phrasing in, in, the, in my introduction. Um, I could um, make an excuse that I haven't had enough coffee yet this morning, but that's pretty, pretty lame. So, um, yeah, the inquiry will be in public. Um, I half misread my notes over them. So I'll pass over to Ryan, who can go through all of the um, detailed process that we know and all the work that we're doing to shape it and recognising um, recognizing that we are trying at this point to work in the open and that means that we some things will be able to answer and there's some things that we are in that we're interested in views upon. So um, handing over to Ryan who can uh, who can set out that context and then we'll move on to Q&A. Ryan. Thanks, Kate. And, and you're absolutely right. There's, there's, there's a fair bit of this we haven't determined. In fact, most of this we haven't yet determined. So the answer to some of the questions will be don't know. What, what, what are your what are your thoughts on it? Um, the, the task I've been given is, is in line with the, the cooperation agreement that was signed between Labour and the Green Party uh, after the May elections. And the line in that in that document says to appoint an independent person to conduct a local non statutory inquiry into the management of the street trees disputes. So that's the task that's the task that I've been asked to fulfill. And um, perhaps a little bit about my background. I think again that might be might be helpful. I'm born and raised in Sheffield. I went away to university and stayed away for a few more years to work. Uh, came back to Sheffield now, getting on 16 years ago. Um, so Sheffield is as, as much part of, of of me as 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 it is as it is anyone else. Um, I worked for the council between 2005 and 2010. I was in the finance team. I wasn't involved in the initial stages, particularly of of the uh, of the procurement of the of the of what became the Amy contract. Although I was aware of, of of some of the discussions that were going on and involved on the side of some of them in the very early days, as we were trying to work out what a what a, a highways PFI as we as we call it then uh, might look like. So I left the council in 2010 and went to work in in a couple of universities for for eight or nine years, and I came back to the council in 2019. 
so again i think one of the major reasons i've been asked to to get involved in this is because i wasn't involved at the council wasn't working at the council at that point i wasn't working in sheffield I've always lived here but wasn't working in sheffield through that time so i was to a certain extent a distant observer of, of what was of what was actually happening at the time so i, I come at this with a, a relatively fresh pair of eyes so non-statutory inquiry what does that mean uh, it means that it has no powers to compel people to attend um, and it's important that we remember that in the way that we set this up, the, 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 a measure of success here and a, member, a measure of the success of the chair that we ultimately appoint will be to get as many people as possible from all the stakeholder groups uh, that are interested in this to, to actually participate in the inquiry. And that's the full range of people from uh, activists, uh, councillors serving and former, uh, council staff officers serving and former, um, you know, Amy uh, serving and former members of staff, uh, South Yorkshire Police perhaps serving and former members of staff and any other members of the public or, or others who are interested in taking part. Um, in terms of a process, uh, at the moment we've, we've got an outline of a process, um, so I've been asked to set it up. The first task on the list is to uh, appoint a set of independent legal advisors to, to help me with this. Um, I'm a director of finance and commercial services setting up uh, independent non statutory inquiries is not something I've done before so uh, we've appointed a firm of external solicitors, uh, their, their name is Waitmans they were appointed via a, a competitive tender process that we ran uh, earlier in the summer. And they have, as part of that process demonstrated significant experience in dealing with not not tree inquiries, but very sensitive uh, non statutory inquiries in a variety of different settings. And, and they uh, convinced us as a, as a, as a panel uh, looking at them uh, that they were the best firm to help us through this. So they're advising me uh, initially and, and other members of the council and in turn and ultimately will be advising the chair of the inquiry. So we've appointed the independent uh, solicitors. The, the next task really is to advertise and we'll advertise this openly and publicly. Uh, for a, an independent chair to, to lead the inquiry. And as, as Douglas said, it's important that that chair has the remit to define and finalise and consult on, and I'll say that very clearly, consult on the final terms of reference for the inquiry. Um, so we'll be advertising for them uh, in, the next, in the next few weeks. I wanted to hear what people have got to say on these meetings first before finalising that appointment process. But we, we envisage using something similar to the way the council appoints its most senior staff. The typical way that's done is a final decision is made by elected members of the council, as, you, as you'd probably expect. But as part of that process, it's normal for us to consult with interested parties and to, to, off, to seek their views on potential candidates. So I can envisage us using something like that as, as a process for doing that. Once the chair's appointed, uh, I would expect the chair to uh, finalise the terms of reference and consult on that terms of reference with the wide range of stakeholders we've, we've got for this for this inquiry. Uh, once that's done, uh, we'll be asking the elected members of the council to sign off those terms of reference. Um, why? Uh, because that terms of reference will have implications both for the cost of the inquiry and for the time the inquiry will take. And it's important that the elected members of the council sign off on that from my day job as, as finance director it's really important that financial decisions uh, at the council are made by elected members of the council. In fact, that's that's the rules. Uh, so we'll be using that process to do that. Uh, the inquiry will then proceed and it will take take its course. Um, we expect hearings to be held in public. We expect written submissions. Uh, we expect uh, the the work that's being done in the council at the minute on producing the on developing the tree uh, archive, the archive to, to, to be to be used to inform the inquiry. There's an outstanding question about whether we need the the, uh, the archive finished first before the inquiry starts or not. Um, and as, as we get into the detail of the, of the process, we'll, we'll try and work out the answer to that question. So the inquiry will proceed and complete. I then expect a draft report to be produced and there'll be an opportunity as part of that process, as is normal in these sort of things, uh, for anyone who happens to be criticised uh, by the inquiry to, to have the opportunity to respond before the report is published. There's a process called Maxwellization for those of you who are familiar with it. So then I'd expect the report to be to be finalised by the chair of the inquiry and, and presented. Uh, the council will then uh, have the opportunity to, to publicly uh, receive that report and respond to it. Um, so that's that's an outline of the process. It's That's the level of detail we're at at the minute. We're working through uh, more of that with, with the independent lawyers. 
um, and we'll hear and listen to to what what people have got to say as part of these 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 series of public meetings. Just in just in terms of the the chair, so that's that's the kind of setting up the inquiry process. In terms of the the specification for the chair, um, again, um, we'd we'd love to hear from 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 you today on your thoughts on this. But some some initial ideas from us, if you want. Um, as people have said already, it's it's critically important that the chair is independent and and independent from everybody's point of view. Uh, so not connected with with the, uh, the 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 dispute so far, I think is is is, is quite an important thing. They've, they've clearly got to have an interest in the subject matter and the time to to, to see this through. This this could potentially, depending on where we end up with the scope and the terms of reference to the inquiry, take quite some time to, to do. Um, they need to have a track record in in this kind of uh, pretty difficult, uh, potentially contentious uh, work, uh, and they need to have a, a reputation that's sufficient to carry that that off um it's, it's, it's so important we've, we've, we've kind of got uh, uh one chance to get this right uh and it's really important that we get somebody to to do this who can who can see this see this process through in terms of characteristics we need somebody who can build trust across a wide range of stakeholders um they've got to be calm measured even-handed and all that all that sort of stuff uh, they've got to have the confidence and authority and and, and potentially decisiveness to, to make decisions as well and to see those decisions through and to bring as many people as possible along with them and, and capable of building a consensus. Uh, in terms of capabilities and competencies, we'll be looking for things like someone who's objective, fair and open-minded with really strong communication skills, including communicating with the public, uh, with the media. So we'll need somebody who's got experience and, and skills in doing that. They'll need to be an extremely strong chair. Uh, it's, it's quite possible they'll have to you know, use, use all their experience of chairing potentially difficult uh, conversations and discussions. Uh, to, to again build that consensus and bring the inquiry to a successful conclusion. Um, the, the volume of paper or submissions that come through to this inquiry are potentially significant. We'll obviously need someone who's capable of dealing with that. We'll obviously be providing them with support uh, behind in, some, in the form of an inquiry team, but it'll be down to the chair to fundamentally understand the material that's, that's discussed and to make judgments on it. So strong investigative and analytical skills and, and so on will be necessary. Um, and to deal with the, that volume of paperwork, um, I, I don't know how many pieces of paper are in the archive yet, but if, 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 we, if we got towards a million, it really wouldn't surprise me for something of this scale and for something that has, has, has been uh, ongoing for, for so long from, from start to finish. So it's that ability to assimilate and, and absorb and, and deal with that, that level of evidence. And obviously project and time management uh, this this is not a not a simple process, so we'll need somebody to lead this process who's got that got that ability to to do that. Now whether whether we'll find all of those skills, competencies, experience in in one person is is unclear to me at this stage. So it's quite possible that we will need to provide support just to answer the question that's popped up to the to the chair of the inquiry that complements their skills and balances out any any gaps in experience they have. So if, if, if we end up with someone who's uh, legally qualified as, as the chair of the inquiry, we can probably pull back a little bit on the legal support. But if we, if we get someone who's a fantastic candidate for the, for the, for the chair's post, um, but, but doesn't have a legal qualification, we might need to put a little bit more independent legal support behind them to, to deal with some of the nuances that, that they might not be so familiar with. We'll, we'll adapt that based on the chair once, the, once they're appointed and, and we'll make the appointment to the chair based on, on the specification and try and get the best person for the job really who can, who can achieve the sort of objectives that, that, that Councillor Grocourt mentioned as, as well as Councillor Johnson to, to talk about that, that opportunity for Sheffield to, to come together at the end of what's been you know, clearly a very difficult period for us. I think I've probably said enough, uh, so I'm happy to, to, to Kate to start taking questions. I can see a few have popped in, but I didn't spot them as they did. Thanks, Ryan. Could you just reiterate um, a little bit about the process for um, the process for I for identifying? So we've talked through the the, the scope and the um, essentially the sort of person specification, but the process that we're intending to go through for for appointment of the chair. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so there will there will be an open advert for for the, for the chair for the post of chair of this inquiry. So it will be an advert in the normal way. Um, we may very well use uh, recruitment consultants to help us with that process, just, just to manage the, manage the process of, of, of uh, dealing with applications and, and also making sure that we get a really strong field. Um, the, 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 the appointment process 
uh, that we've, we've, we've discussed is, is, as I said, similar to the, the way we appoint our most senior council members of staff. Um, the decision is ultimately made by elected members of the council, but they do that uh, based on uh, uh, as often advice or thoughts, not, 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 not binding in any way, from stakeholders for that post. So, for example, um, if, if you're appointing someone uh, who has strong links with community groups in, into a very senior position, you'd often have an informal panel, panel of members of some community groups to talk to the, 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 the final three or four candidates for the post and to offer their thoughts to the elected members before they make their decision. Um, I can see a process very similar to that, drawing in a group of stakeholders to this inquiry being used in the appointment of the chair. So um, stakeholders might not have a, a vote if you want on the appointment of the chair, but they'd have an opportunity to, to, to play their thoughts into the final process. Now we're not, we're not nailed this down or agreed it or anything, but this, these are the, the conversations that we're having as part of that appointment process. Okay, does that help? It does, thank you very much, Ryan. So I'm going to um, shortly ask Stan to bring everybody into the room, but there are a couple of factual questions that have come into the chat and the Q&A that I think it's worth just um, answering now. One is about the um, asking for a written copy of the draft person specification for the chair. Um, and I think we're, we're, it's fine for us to, we'll circulate that after the meeting to everybody who attended. Um, the, there's a couple of questions about the budget, um, which um, uh, Ryan will will um, will be happy to answer. I wonder if it's worth just, um, just um, yeah, we'll taking that ahead. one now, Ryan, thanks. Um, so the direct answer is a question, is there a budget for this? Not yet, no, uh, that depends on the scope. So um, what, what I didn't want to do is to say, right, I suppose it's my, my, my day job title that might be drawing some of these questions out, but the, there, isn't, there isn't a fixed budget for it yet. What we, what we want is a conversation with uh, elected members, uh, stakeholders today and, and next week to understand where, where we think the scope and lines of this inquiry need to be drawn. There then does need to be discussion about, okay, if we want, a, if we want an inquiry that's of that size, then we think it'll take this long and cost this much that might cause some conversations in the council. Some inquiries take years and years and years and cost millions and millions and millions. If that's, if that's, what's, if that's what uh, people ultimately, um, uh, if the elected members ultimately vote for that, then that, that's what we'll, we'll try and make happen. But we'll, there'll need to be a conversation about the scale and size of the inquiry and, and the time and cost that will we'll run alongside that. We haven't got a budget fixed for it yet in any way. Thanks, Ryan. So I'm going to, at this moment, um, ask Dan to bring everybody into the room. Please be patient um, uh, for a minute or two, because I think it takes a little bit of time for everybody to come in. So uh, uh, we'll we'll do that. And uh, and then what I'll do is I'll go to the questions that are in the Q&A first. And then I'd ask from now on, please, if you would um, uh, raise your hand if you want to come in. So I can see people are starting to join. Can I, I just check, Dan, while people join, can they hear what is being said or not? They should be able to, yes, um, but yeah. Well, let's just have a little break for a minute because I don't want anybody to miss anything. So we'll just have a, a minute or two break while people are brought in to the Q&A. Thanks. Thanks everybody for your patience while we just let everybody in. 
It seems Zoom is, Zoom is also waking up slowly today. <laughs> Okay, everyone's now had the, or should have had the invite to join the panel for the conversation. Um, I think this Thanks, time Dan. you might need to accept them though. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks everybody for your patience and welcome now into the um, Q&A room. As I'll just re reiterate, if people could remain on mute, please, um, other than where you're brought in. And if you could raise your hand using the raise hand function, if you'd like to ask a question. Um, I, I'm going to go first, though, to the questions that have already, already been raised in the Q&A box. Um, so I'll just take them in the order that they appear. Um, there's a question from Marcus Comby. I don't know if Mr Comby wants to come in and, and speak to this, um, but this uh, essentially relates to a question around um, the, the data and information that will be um, available um, to the inquiry. I don't know, um, Ryan, if you want to, um, if you want to have a go at answering this, um, recognizing that, um, you know, we, there's also, um, you know, uh, this may well be something that um, we need to um, come back to when we've got the terms of reference and everything detailed. Do you want to just have a go? Um, I'll certainly have a go. So, does it? Yeah, I, it's, it's a it's a it's a fair, it's a fair question, uh, Mr. Comby. Um, I genuinely don't know what the question refers to, so I'm not I'm not really in a position to answer in terms of those statements. I mean, it would be no. I know what we are trying from from the point of view of the of the, of the archive and so on to to find everything that's relevant. Uh, um, Mr. Comby, you've got your hand up. I don't know if you if you want to speak to this. Yeah, Mark, you want to come in? I suppose the only thing I'd say. Yeah, is I could. It's, oh, one second it was just to say that as a from a, as from a point of view of the council um, and the organisation of the council, it will be our intention to make sure that the chair and the panel um, of the inquiry have access to every bit of information that they need from within the council. Um, so that, that may not answer the question, but I, I want to be absolutely clear that that um, all information will be shared with them. But do you want to sure. Yeah. Um, Council Lodge wrote a letter to the Guardian on the Council's behalf. And there's been a Freedom of Information request for this. And the Council can produce no records, not even of that letter being sent to the Guardian. Now, Councillor Groker says she only heard about this in the media. Now, if the letter that a Councillor sent to the Guardian cannot be found and produced to Freedom of Information requests, what other media elements are going to be missing in the inquiry as well? I think we need. Well, what we'll need to think about within the inquiry is the acts, media records will be available. You know, there'll be a, the records of what have been published. What has been published in the media will obviously be available to the inquiry. Um, but we'll, um, and as I say, any information that's held in the council will be will be shared. Um, but we'll have a. We'll, um, perhaps if we have a look at the specifics of this this issue um, and make sure that we that 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 information is included. Um, shall we move on to Lee Armstrong's question? Lee, I don't know if you want to come in, um, but essentially this is this is around the um, scope in terms of reference, making them deliverable. Maybe that some of the points Ryan made in his explanation of what we have and haven't um, established in the preparation for the inquiry have answered some of that, but is there anything that you'd want to reiterate from your question? 
Um, I guess it's really just understanding a bit more about what your plans are to, to make sure that this is as wide ranging as it needs to be. Um, and it's going to be very challenging probably for any chair uh, to have the expertise that they need. No one is an expert in comms and policing and legal and environment and contracting and so on. So they're presumably going to need quite a bit of support. And, and I'm guessing that as well as appointing the chair, you need the right team around the person and they need the right access and so on. And, and we could delay the inquiry considerably if we kind of wait until the chairs establish the terms of reference and they've all gone through voting if we don't have the right steps in place. Thank you. A really clear question. I think from our point of view, as soon as we the, the chair appointment is the is the really critical first step. Um, as soon as that chair is appointed, we will have a sense of that that individual's strengths, experience, uh, and any potential areas, as Ryan mentioned earlier, where we're likely to need to supplement um, a support team with specialist skills, um, whether on a on a short term or a permanent basis as we build the team. So I don't think once the chair's appointed, I don't think we should see the process as, as um, completely linear. I think we can run the process of building the team in parallel to the work on establishing the terms of reference. Obviously, there will be a balance throughout this of wanting to work at a pace that is commensurate with the level of commitment that the cooperative executive has to getting this inquiry up and running and um, and, and progressing at the same time, as we've all said, um, there is no, and as, as, as Council Grodcourt said very clearly and, and um, emphatically at the beginning, there's, there's no point doing this if we're not going to do it well and if it's not going to be, um, you know, a uh, uh, done properly and so I think that that, that balance and that trade-off is going to be something we'll have to um, keep working through but um, I think you know that that hopefully that answers the question at least in terms of our intent um, and it really does uh, at this stage the very important first step that next important first step is getting the chair in place. Is there anything you'd add Ryan or Councillor Groke or Councillor Johnson to that? Nothing from me that's right we'll we'll, we'll put a team around the, the person as, as, as you said Lee um, and, and it'll depend on the on the skill set of the individual. Councillor Johnson. Yeah, I mean, I would just say that, you know, one of the big challenges for all of us, you know, for everyone here is going to be about how focused the inquiry is. I mean, from my point of view, it's very much about finding someone to chair it and then asking them to take the lead on where you go. But the biggest risk to the inquiry in a way is they could just be sidetracked into just spending lots of time looking at things that really aren't relevant. Um, you know, and it's important they draw out the main focus of, you know, what, what are the big issues? What are the big issues that have gone on in the last few years and that affect us all now? Um, and so just going back to the um, the, the documents, so in this, as Ryan said, you know, we could have, you know, a million pieces of paper. We could have more than that. Uh, I would actually expect there's quite a lot more than that. And no one can expect everyone to you know, read all those. And if they did, what good would it do? They'd just have their brain fried, really. So what's really important is, you know, we, we all have a think about what are the things that we really want the inquiry to be talking about and, you know, to the exclusion of, of other things. So I'll just leave that there for now. Thanks, Councillor Johnson. Um, do you, Ryan, do you want to answer Albert's question just around the time period covered by the inquiry um, question here, whether it's, it will begin at the start of the PFI procurement process? That's one of the things we, we haven't determined. Um, so that the, the, the conversation or the discussion about breadth and depth, how wide does it go, how, how far back in time or how far forward in time indeed does it go? That's the sort of thing I'd expect to be, to be consulting on um, as, as we appoint the chair. And, and as the chair finalises the terms of reference and, and discusses that with, with elected members and other stakeholders. Thanks, Ryan. Um, I'm going to come to uh, Benoit now, um, who's got his hand raised. Um, and, uh, and then I'll come to, there's a couple of questions from an anonymous attendees um, that I'll, around document retention policies. I'll come to that um, after Benoit's been able to ask his question. Benoit. Oh, hello there. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'd just like to know, if uh, the trials are going to be reviewed, as there are a few people who are still uh, 
well, <laughs> waiting for a, for a review of them. Uh, there are certain officers of the council who have uh, lied at court. Uh, I can give a further example if you need. Uh, and I think that's going to be one of the priority uh, to to uh, to uh, to review uh, well this and to find a solution, I, I guess. That's my question. Thank you. I think we might need to take that one away. But Ryan, do you do you have an answer to that at this point? Or I mean, that 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 that, that period of time that, that that's been talked about here is is is, is right in the middle of this this dispute. So I, I can't imagine that that would be excluded for, for time. Whether we go all the way back to the st the very start of the PFI procurement process, which can go back to I think two thousand and six. That, that that might be a more open question, but the, the period of time that, that that's been been talked about in this question, I think, is is almost inevitably going to be included in the inquiry. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, um, I'm going to. I'm, I'm now um, moving between multiple different. It'd be good if people could use the Q and A function rather than the chat box, because otherwise, I'm going to struggle with. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my best, but just to make sure people get things in order. So there's a couple of questions from a, an anonymous attendee. Uh, may, I'm not sure if it's the same, don't know if it's or two different ones, but um, firstly, has there been or will there be a formally announced halt to SEC's normal document retention policies? And secondly, can interested parties be offered credible reassurance about the Council's sincerity uh, in the light of well-publicised and continuing FOI, SAR and formal complaint um, non-compliance? Um, I mean, from my point of view, um, as the Chief Executive of the Council, you can um, be absolutely assured of my sincerity um, in terms of our commitment to openness to our responsibilities um, as public servants around um, uh, sharing information, uh, transparency. Um, it, it is the case that um, uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of our FOI response rates, um, and some of the chat we have, you know, we have been, we've, we've had some um, challenges, particularly driven by uh, staffing shortages during COVID. Um, and I'm currently looking at um, uh, looking at that with with our teams, and we're working really hard to get um, get back on track in terms of our FOI response rates, um, and making sure that that's um, done in keeping with the the commitments um, that we all hold um, very centrally as public servants. Um, going right back to the um, uh, principles of public life. So, um, so you can take that as a, as a commitment um, from me. Um, I think in terms of the um, specifics about um, whether we, we have a, a formally announced halt to the document retention policy, I'll, I'll take that away and look at that um, uh, and make sure that there's, there's nothing, um, that there's no reason um, that, or to make sure that we, you know, if we need to do that, we, we can do it. Um, I'm, I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Ryan, on that, or any members. Nothing to add, Kate, thanks. Okay, um, I've just had a, um, <laughs> just been told, thank you to Lee and many other people who are now telling me that apparently the Q&A is now lo no longer open because you're in the panel. Um, we are learning and we are um, doing so in the open. So thank you, as we said, for your patience. So actually what I'm gonna say now is don't use the Q&A box. I think I've answered all the questions in there anyway. If you can't, um, if you could please raise your hand and, 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 uh, and I'll bring you in. But um, instead, if you could use the chat box, if you can't raise your hand or you, or you wouldn't like to speak, um, then I'll try to keep up with that. So um, I'm gonna zoom back up the, um, the chat box. Um, there's a question about the Street Tree Archive and will it be presented where possible in searchable format or database, um, machine readable, open, et cetera. Um, I think um, uh, Marcus, uh, I, I don't know the answer to that in terms of the initial um, launch of the of the archive, but um, we will. I'm happy for us to commit that it will be our intention to get to a place where everything that we're um, everything that is possible to be put into an open machine readable format is is done so as part of the archive. Um, more generally, I think we need as as a council and and. Um, as public services to move increasingly to open to um, more open data policies so that's that's something that we'll want to be doing but you'll appreciate that that's more and more challenging when you're dealing with documents that may or may not be held in in formats from from 
um, uh, from times gone by. So, um, so that I'm happy to take that away. Um, Ryan, would you be able to answer the um, question from, um, I believe it's from Maggie Linford, if a potential witness wants legal advice before giving evidence, will it be paid for by the council? Um, it's not something we've considered or decided to be quite honest. So I'd, I'd like to take that one away and have conversations with with, with colleagues and, uh, and members about that and, and also my independent legal advisor. I'm aware that some inquiries uh, have done that sort of thing in the past, um, but that uh, there's, a, there's an open question for me as to whether we, as whether we want to, to do that in this case. Thank you, Ryan. Um, Graham, would you like to come in? You've you've kindly raised your hand, which is which is what I was asking. So thank you for that. And then I'll come to Isabel O'Leary's question in the chat afterwards. Graham, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I see Alan Billings is with us. I'd like to ask Alan, if possible, will the police fully cooperate with the inquiry? Um, Alan is here as a um, as a attendee, so I don't want to put Alan on the spot. But if Alan's happy to answer. So then, then, then he's taking his camera off. So yeah, if, if you're happy to answer, Alan, thank you. Uh, yes, is the answer. Um, I was slightly surprised to discover there was no police here today, but I guess they're waiting for the inquiry actually to get going. Um, since I've got the floor, so to speak, um, it, it does seem to me that um, until, until we've pinned down the terms of reference and made it very clear what is and what isn't in scope here, the, the potential for this to go all over the place and to go on forever is vast. Uh, every stone you pick up is likely to have all sorts of things underneath it. So I just wonder if you've given any thought to A, being very precise about exactly what the focus is. What is this an inquiry into? What exactly are you trying to get at? Because otherwise there are so many issues around here. And B, whether you've given any thought to time limiting it, because unless you, Unless you have an end point, I can see that this is just um, never ending. And that, that would be a real concern to me as a good citizen of Sheffield. But, but to return to your original point, yes, the police will be fully cooperative as will my office. Thank you, Dr. Billings. And I think that's, a, I mean, uh, the points around the potential to time limit or um, to, and to really tighten the scope are, are well made and I think that's precisely what we wanted to flag today, that those are some of the considerations the council will need to take um, as we firm up the process. Part of the um, purpose of this meeting today was to, again, share openly the, the questions we're asking ourselves, the work we're doing, the thoughts we're having, and to make sure that um, those who have uh, an interest uh, in the um, process of the inquiry are able to share uh, questions or, co or, or or thoughts or reflections on what should and shouldn't be included. And I, and I think it's helpful that we've already started to get some of those bits of feedback from this discussion so far. So while I don't disagree with you at all that we will need to get to a place where this, uh, the inquiry has a really clear terms of reference, really clear scope, and particularly thinking about budget that we've got some clarity around um, the time scale we're expecting it to take. Um, I think it's um, uh, I think it's a credit to the team that we've, we've um, We've decided to have this conversation now rather than wait until we've dotted all the i's and crossed all the t's um uh, and not been open as we as we create those terms of reference so um but but yeah you're absolutely right uh we we won't we won't initiate the inquiry until those things are in place um i don't know if um if uh councillor johnson or councillor grocott want to come in here with any other reflections on the sort of purpose of the inquiry and the objectives again just to restate that um as a by way of answering alan's question thank you julie yeah i think alan makes a couple of really good points there and i think it's important for everyone involved that you know the terms of reference are clear for me this meeting this morning is really important for me to start getting my head around a number of um, concerns and issues that are flagged up so that we can look at how they factor into the terms of reference so that we make them as inclusive as they possibly can be, but also focused onto the points and issues that are of concern for people. So I think you're right, Alan, if we don't do that, this could just become a never ending scenario. And it's important for everyone that that isn't the case. And so I think again, also looking at putting a time constraint on, 
on that while not wanting to um, stop any um, discussion or debate. I think it's important that we all understand what we are working to um, so that we can properly focus on the things that um, matter and other things that people want some um, clarity and resolution to. So thank you for raising those points. Thanks, Julie. Um, um. So if, if I, because, yes, I'll just as I, I mean, I agree with um, Alan and Julie. Um, as I was saying before, it's you know really important that we have some focus on you know what goes into this inquiry, and that means also thinking about what comes out of it. It'd be really useful to hear from anyone here as to any um, suggestions as to what people here feel they would like to get out of it. If there's anything that would, you know they can really anything specific they can suggest. Um, I mean, I, I see there is one comment in the in the chat about. Um, simply establishing a timeline of what happened and I agree that is a really important thing to do um, but you know what are the the other questions after that thanks councillor Johnson and thanks Christine for sharing that um, that reflection from from someone who isn't here about um, about what they'd like to see um, please do put your hand up if you've got anything you'd like to add um, or any response to Douglas's question um, while we wait for that, um, Isabel's asked what has been done to prevent destruction or hiding of relevant documents. Um, I'll, I'll say two things here. One, one, one thing is to be absolutely clear that it is um, an integral part of any public servant's duty and responsibility to be um, committed to uh, uh, the Nolan principles on public life, to our standards and the codes of conduct that we sign up to when we take on all of our roles. It's something I take personally extremely seriously um, and expect all of my offices to do so across the council. Um, we, um, we will be, you know, the, the what we're doing is reiterating that commitment. Um, I'll be uh, issuing some communication to all staff um, probably in the next week or so just around our, uh, the importance that we put around um, responding to um, freedom of information requests, for example, but also effective uh, data use and storage. And that's something we continue to do as an organization. Um, uh, that is what we, we have to rely on um, as an organization of 8,000 people in terms of uh, that and accountability. So um, uh, I, that's, that's how I'd answer that question, Isabel. Um, Ruth has asked or has made a point around consultation on the terms of reference. I think we um, I think there's something here about the use of the word consultation. Um, and, and just to be clear, I think um, how we it may be Ryan, I don't know if you want to speak about this, but just it, it, how are we how are we envisaging that um, the chair and the support team will work as as the terms of reference and as the specifics of the of the um, process are firmed up um, obviously we're doing this meeting now we'll continue to do these sorts of meetings my expectation will be we'll use these meetings as the as the main forum um, as well as uh, publishing things on on the website so that anybody uh, people can see what what we're what work is going on and can um, feedback if they have comments or questions but um, as well as through councillors in the normal way but Ryan anything you would you would add to that yeah just just directly answer Ruth's questions is the council's expectation that, that, that consultation will have an impact or influence on the terms of reference yes um can the chair be asked to be clear about how these consultations have had an impact i see no reason why not i can i can, I can completely envisage a almost a before and after consultation version of the terms of reference if if, if that if that helps um so yeah yeah i think to both of those that's that's the whole point and, and that, that, that applies to, to all, all the stakeholders in this process. Thank you. Um, would anybody who hasn't, anybody who hasn't spoken yet or anybody who wants to come in to, in response to Douglas's question really about what do you think the objectives of this inquiry should be? Uh, you've all given up an hour and a half of your time on a um, on a Wednesday morning. It'd be, you know, if, if, there are, if you have strong views about what you think the, the good looks like at the end of this it would be really helpful for us to hear that sue do you want to come in i can't work out whether you've taken yourself off mute no. I 
I'm not so so I suppose um Matt so nobody nobody's got anything that they want to add in on on that in terms of am I taking to take it from that then that the way that Councillor Grocott and Councillor Johnson described the purpose of the inquiry at the outset is something that people are content to agree with I just want to make sure people have the chance to raise questions or or disagreements can we have another way to answer that question rather than trying to do it off the top of our heads in the last four minutes of the call I think we've got a whole half an hour left actually Lee so um so yeah okay um uh, of course we can have another way to answer that question um uh so let's um let's suggest that if you would like to reflect on this question and um and share thoughts and reflections back that you um you know please do so in the next in the i don't know ryan's coming in to help me i was going to suggest how, how they there is there is an email address kate that we've set Thanks. up for this inquiry which I, I think we can ask dan to circulate to the to the attendees that they may already have it but we, we'd love to hear from you if, if if you want to take a bit more time to, to do this and understand that you know answering asking asking questions directly on the back of something like this isn't something that I find particularly easy to do. So uh, I get that, uh, and also we'll circulate um, the the points I made on the person specification for the uh, for the chair as well. And and again, we'd love to hear from from you. Um, we've got this meeting this week, got another one next week, so a good couple of weeks, frankly, before we're, we're into to finalising specifications and getting out to adverts, I'd, I'd have thought at least. So, so plenty of time if people want to take a bit of time to, uh, to, to have a good think about it, which I, yeah, makes sense to me. Thanks, Ryan, for saving me um, uh, from my forgetting that we had the proper email address for the inquiry. Um, but yeah, we'll send all that around. So anybody who wants to come in um, uh, and share those views can do so. I would just really encourage people to try to do so in the next couple of weeks, if possible, because um, obviously we are trying to get on with them um, with that appointment of the chair. Um, and, and some of this is really material to that process. Um, great. Um, any other questions or comments? We have got actually until um, until 10 o'clock. Um, so there's a, a little while if anybody wants to ask anything else. Um, there's been another question come in on the Q&A from an anonymous attendee asking whether Ryan, you envisage that witness invitations are published, I will the public be aware of refusals by those invited? I see that as a matter for the chair, to be honest, some some inquiries in the terms of reference or in the in the reports will um, make it clear where somebody declines to attend. Um, others, others don't. Um, so I'd, I wouldn't want to if you like, um, after the chair's discretion to write the terms of reference they want to write at this stage. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Margaret Riley, you've got your hand up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I, I'm just an interested citizen in all of this, really, um, which is why I've attended this morning. And I'm just finding it really difficult to, I'm finding myself torn because I just can't get my head around how big or how small this is all going to be and how much it's going to cost as a citizen of the, you know, of, of Sheffield. Um, and I think it's important that we're doing something like this because it feels to me like this seems like a controversial topic to many people, although to other people it, it simply won't be on the radar at all. Um, and I guess what's in my mind is how long we think it's going to take, how long you think it's going to take to appoint a chair and get terms of reference. Because I guess if you see that as about proportionality, proportionately, if it takes us, you know, four months, five months or whatever to appoint a chair and get terms of reference agreed, then if that's like 10% of the whole scope of the whole thing, then that's like 50 months, 40 to 50 months of um, experience that this, um, inquiry is going to run and who knows how much that's going to cost and whether the lessons learned have just taken so long to get out there that we've passed the opportunity to actually do anything with that outcome. So for me, it's, it feels like how are we just going to make sure it's absolutely proportional in terms of cost, efficiency and effectiveness of this inquiry in terms of learning. And it feels to me like um, I wonder if you've considered specifying what's out of scope 
so that we have absolute avoidance of doubt that this inquiry is going to deliver something that it, it shouldn't deliver because it's too expensive, too difficult, too long term and too many scars and too much water has passed under the bridge for, for that to be worthwhile. Thanks, Margaret. That's a really, really helpful intervention and, and, and really good question. Um, I would say that I think that we shouldn't extrapolate from the time it takes to appoint a chair um, that that I'm not sure that's a, um, necessarily follows that that if it takes four months, then, um, you know, it'll go on. I think it is important that we take the, the right amount of time to get a chair in place. Um, um, uh, and I wouldn't want to assume that if it does take us that amount of time, which I hope it won't, but uh, you know it's possible um, that that would therefore mean that the inquiry itself would take longer. I think once you have a chair in place and the team in place, and the terms of reference in place, having worked on inquiries myself before, um, from you know as a member of inquiry teams, you you do just then crack on. Um, you are also absolutely right that the terms of reference need to be clear on what's in and out of scope, and that is going to be one of the things that um, uh, we can do. Um, and the, the chair can do um, to um, to manage the, um, the the deliverability, the efficiency, and the cost of the of the inquiry. Um, and I expect there to be some choices there, um, and those choices will need to be taken by elected members um, rightly, as, as Ryan said right at the, at the top of the meeting, um, when it comes to any decisions around use of public funds. So, um, so I think, but I think it is a really it is a really helpful intervention in terms of just, um, I think you've just explained really clearly the, the, the trade-offs we're gonna to have to make over the course of the next few months. Um, and I think we need to be really open to the citizens of Sheffield about those trade-offs because um, uh, they matter to everyone in our city. Um, spending money, uh, it, it's the right thing to do uh, to um, do this inquiry. I think we're all really, we are genuinely all committed to it, um, but those choices around the scope will be will be material in terms of in terms of cost and length of time. I don't know if um, any of the other panelists uh, want to add anything to that. Okay. No, it's fine. Thanks, Douglas. Any other questions or hands that want hands to be raised? Okay. Um, I think then I'm not seeing any other hands raised. I want to... Oh, Christine, thank you. Sorry, I'm always conscious to leave a bit of time because I know that it's not always it's not always straightforward to get the get Zoom to work. Christine, do you want to come in? Hi. Um, a very simple question. How how does this process work when it when it starts? Do people turn it with evidence if you've got questions just how does it work <laughs> thanks christine i mean inquiries can work in different ways but ryan can give you a bit of a um a sort of uh, an, an, a mini explainer on 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 the how the, the standard way we'd expect an inquiry like this to proceed yeah so thanks kate hi christine good to see you again um the the, the conversation we're having with the external lawyers at the minute uh is is, is exactly on the on the, how that how that kind of process might work um, I'd expect us, uh, you know, once the once the chair has, has consulted and finalised and, and got approval for the terms of reference, uh, we'd be into things like um, a, a review of, of the archive material that's that's currently being being set up. Uh, I'd expect the, the chair to or the inquiry to invite written submissions from interested parties. I'd expect the the inquiry to hold um, public hearings if you if you want where, where people can come and make submissions in, in person I'd expect that to be part of the inquiry too um, the, 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 the detail of exactly how that might work and what sort of time scales we, we haven't we haven't worked through yet uh, and part of that is the conversation with the chair and, and it it's to a certain extent determined by the, the scope and the breadth and depth of the terms of reference as well in terms of what might be appropriate for that. So there's a lot, lot still to, 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 to be detailed and agreed on that. Thanks, Brian. They were just you? thinking like in terms of working out what we would put together from our side, thinking it's useful to know 
Yeah, un 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 understood we completely. Like so it. yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd expect us to invite written submissions uh, to to the to the inquiries. Uh, to, you know, kind of terms of reference. I'd, I'd expect that term of reference to almost contain key questions that the inquiry was seeking seeking to resolve. Um, but again, uh, in per in person hearings as well, just just reflects the fact that some people will prefer to appear in person and and, and make make the points they wish to make in person. Others um, might might prefer to make written submissions. Um, good, just just a related question actually that, that that Graham Rose popped in in the in the chat about um, about video evidence and does the archive include video evidence? Um, I don't know, but we'll pop an answer perhaps in the communication that that follows this up. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um... I'll continue to mention the Nolan principle. So um, that is something that it, it, that both within the work we do um, on the inquiry, but all the work we do as a council and as public servants, they're at the core of that. So, um, and that's a given in, in any inquiry, I think that um, we take as read that that is the, the, the sort of spine of, of the way we approach our, our responsibilities as public servants. Um, Marcus has asked, what has the council identified so far as what went wrong and what needs to be looked at? Um, I feel like you might, might might be. This is one where I think it is really important that having agreed to do the, to to do the inquiry, Marcus. We are we are trying really hard to to just focus on what we need to do to make sure that we're supporting that inquiry and that we're not preempting it in any way. Um, and so um, so I think you know the any sense that that the council itself has identified um, uh, or, or gone into to identify and find what went wrong, what needs to be looked at, given that's likely to be the, um, the scope of the inquiry. I think that, that that would all muddy the waters a bit, but but Councillor Johnson or Councillor Grocook can correct me if they think I'm wrong on that. No. No, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I suppose, if anything, um, Kate, I would just say, I think, you know, looking at what could come out of this is the opportunity for people to tell their stories. And that is really the point about an opportunity for people to, you know, be able to submit evidence to the inquiry in public in some way. And so, although I think that is obviously for the chair to, you know, make a decision on, take a lead on, you know, that is something that you know, I would like to see. Thanks, Douglas. I don't know if Councillor Grocourt or I'm happy to come in on this as well. Um, Ruth Hubbard's asked a follow-up to Marcus's point about the kinds of outcomes that people would like to see, and she's asked, well, what, what are our views about the kind of outcomes the council officers and the councils would like to see? Um, I think Julian Douglas spoke a bit about this at the beginning, Ruth, but, I, but Douglas has just made a, a, a really good specific point that this is an opportunity for um, a diverse range of stories to be heard, um, and that's an important part of, of moving on. Um, Julie, do you want to add anything um, to your earlier points about essentially, um, you know, the outcomes that, that you would like to see um, as a as a councillor and as a deputy leader? I think I'd like to see um, this bringing all interested parties together um, with a resolution that can satisfy everyone so that people do genuinely feel that they have been learned so that we as a council um, can learn any lessons that come that come out of the um, the recommendations from the inquiry um, and we don't find ourselves in a situation like this again you know um, the reputation the damage that is done to the council that is done to the city um, I think is something that concerns us all and that's why I think we're all here today because we want to mend that and we want to put Put that right so I think um, for me it's about how we do that in a in a respectful way in a way that makes sure everyone as Douglas says can have their say can tell their story and that as a city you know we can move forward and start um, being I suppose proud of our city again and making sure that people um, see you know what a great place we are and um, for me, I suppose that that's really important, but we'll only achieve that if everyone um, who is an interested party feels that they've um, been listened to, that people have understood um, their position and that we found a way that we can properly move forward. Thanks, Julie. I, I couldn't have said it better myself in terms of my my objective as, a, as the um, had a paid service in the in the council, and I think I think I speak for 
all of the senior officers I've spoken to as well about this, that there is a, you know, we are proud to serve our city. We believe this is a fantastic city that has a huge amount of potential. And it is um, what, what we want to see is the ability for all of us together to move forward uh, and achieve that potential. And to, to do that, we, we recognize, I think that it is absolutely right that we invest that time in listening and understanding and reflecting and that we make sure that we're open to learning lessons that, that, that need to be learned, but that we also together recognize that it's really important for us, for our future, for the, you know, for our communities that we are able to move forward as a city together. And, and for this not to be, you know, as, as many of you know, I've, I've moved back to the area after being away for 20 years and I, it, it, it sort of, it, it really saddens me that this is still, you know, we, we, we can't say anything. I can't say anything positive about the city on any, without someone mentioning this. And, and, I, and that's, that's, you know, and until we've got to a place where we can say confidently um, that we, we've learned from this experience and we want to move forward from it, um, that, that feels like it will always be a bit of a, a drag on our potential. And I, I think that's a, sh a real, real shame. And, and mostly it's a shame for our kids and our communities who need, need us to be um, delivering for, for a, um, a strong and fair future. So that's, that's, that's what drives me in it. And that might seem sort of slightly highfalutin given it's just an, it's an inquiry into something, but it, it's a good example of, um, of why this matters. And it's something I think we need to keep focused on. Um, I don't know if Ryan, do you want to answer Justin's, um, do you want to say anything about Justin Buxton's question about personal complaints? I mean, the main thing I'd just say is that first, there is obviously a complaints procedure in the council um, uh, that we follow um, diligently and that is really important to me um, and, to, and to both, you know, to, to the, the smooth running of the council. Um, and so we need to make sure that that, that complaints process is able to continue. Um, whether it's uh, you know re regarding the the tree, the the trees, or or indeed any other item of um, of council business, but um, I don't know, Ryan, if you want to say anything specifically about um, about the interaction of complaints versus yeah. alongside the the, um, the inquiry itself. So I don't want to, I don't want to go into, into into the specifics of any individual complaint. Um, will, will the council use the inquiry as an excuse to avoid? pursuing or uh, avoid dealing with personal no we won't um what we what we are very keen to do is to de deal with complaints positively as, as far as we're able to do so um what i don't want to do is to deal with a complaint in a way that completely cuts across the work of the inquiry um so there's a there's a fine balance to be to be to be to be warped um if if if, if you feel if people people who've made complaints feel that, that the council is using the, the inquiry as an excuse not to deal with the complaint now um please get in touch with us and we'll look at it from that perspective um pe people who uh, investigate complaints and resolve them aren't, aren't close to this inquiry that the, the people you see on the screen are the ones who are close to this inquiry we've deliberately kept uh, kept it quite tight because so many people at the council are involved as stakeholders uh, but do get in touch with us if you feel that, that if, if you feel that we've done that. I'm aware of uh, three specific complaints um, that, are, that have been made, and, and we are going to take a look at those three complaints to see if we are able to to answer them um, without prejudicing or fettering the, the inquiry. Sorry, Justin, I, I know we, we touched on this very briefly when we met, uh, uh, whenever it was recently. Um, I haven't, and I've now got all of the complaints and had a look at them. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. One more call for any final questions, comments, reflections. I hope this has been helpful for people. I'm sorry we don't have all the answers and all the details and all, but actually I'm sort of sorry, not sorry, because I think the whole point of this is that we, is that we, as I said, is that we try and be open about the process that we're, we're the approach we're taking. Um, I think we've answered, I'm just skimming through the chat, I think we've answered everything that has been raised um, in chat and in Q&A. Um, you will send around the email address um, so that any further reflections, uh, when people have time to absorb what's being discussed, can be shared with the inquiry team. As Ryan mentioned, um, that inquiry team is um, 
is uh, is a very is a, at this point a small team and and deliberately um, uh, working um, in a in a way that is um, sort of separate from uh, from other bits of um, other bits of the council on the inquiry. Um, we will also share the draft person specification for the chair. Um, there's another in-person meeting, as I mentioned, next Thursday evening. Uh, will the chair of the inquiry have access to documents deemed to be LPP? That's a legal professional privilege for, for those who don't know the acronym, Ryan. Um, as, as, as far as I we're so. possibly, yes, as far as we're possibly able to do so. I mean, the, one, one of the conversations that we need to have as a council is the extent to which we make, you know, particularly to the chair of the inquiry, everything available. And I think, you know, the presumption from my point of view is yes, unless there's a real serious reason why we can't. Yeah, and I have to say, my starting assumption is that everything will be made available to the yeah. chair. Um, great, thanks so much for your time. Uh, take good care, do share any further thoughts if you have them. Uh, we'll commit to continue to run um, these sorts of sessions on a reasonably regular basis as and when we have uh, points in the sand and, and, uh, and um, further things um, firmed up. And, um, and we will um, and keep an eye on the um, internet sites as well in terms of, uh, in terms of further news or information. Uh, have a lovely day and take good care and we will see you soon. Thank you.